Hello and welcome to WMA Weekly Updates on Digital India podcast brought to you by students and staff of Web Marketing Academy. I am your host Mansi. It is the 13th of May 2015 and what a lovely weather. It's amazing. Here are some top stories for this week. Google Plus introduces collections that is something that we're going to talk about at length. LinkedIn unveils analytics for publishing on LinkedIn and this is happening at an individual level too. Facebook introduces native ad tools and yes they give you three powerful reasons why they have introduced this. Meerkat adds Facebook support and now you can actually live stream all the happenings and events to your audience on Facebook. Indian marketers have highest level of confidence in their digital marketing proficiency in APAC you can listen to them i'm just going to read that out and last but not the least chief digital officers are taking home most of the digital marketing industry dough with a salary increase of 7.5% oh yes that's a lot of money all the digital marketers are taking back home All right and those were the headlines for this week before we move on to the detailed stories we have two tips for our audience and to give away the first tip we have with us Arup Arup is a current student at Web Marketing Academy welcome Arup Thank you so much Mansi for this uh, warm welcome uh, speech for me All right thank you and what is your tip for today Uh, as in, uh, I mean, as in a digital marketer, it, it, it is very much necessary for a person to get socialized first. Mm-hmm. As we know, I mean, you know, uh, we have very much, we have uh, too many social websites like Facebook. Okay. It is, uh, it is very much important so that you know you can extend your network across peoples in various domains in digital marketing. It's a platform, uh, probably you know you can you can share your views and you can take up someone else's view and give suggestions to people who are looking for some solutions in the uh, digital marketing you know platform. Is is there a particular process that you would like to talk to our audience about? Is it something that they should rigorously follow, saying that uh, you know uh, if I have to socialize, probably these are the things that they should look at. Yes, sure. I mean, in the, in that case, I would uh, suggest a person to go with you know to follow some blogs. blogs is is quite a very necessary uh, this thing for digital marketer where you know you'll be able to read someone's mind because blogs is a part where you know people write out write down their minds in the you know uh, online uh, platform okay so blogs i can suggest and what about social media marketing you, you were talking about individuals uh, going on to social media platforms right so how should they utilize it i mean you're talking about networking but um, is there any specific thing that they should follow saying that you know hey every day can i do this and then uh, go on to linkedin and follow them those kind of things i mean probably a person can start with twitter the same platform i mean where you know people come and share their views so probably they start with twitter i mean twitter it's it's not only someone's you know uh, someone who puts up their mind in twitter it's also about you know uh, current affairs people can go through current affairs also probably in a uh, you know hard working uh, uh, hard working hours in your in your uh, in, a, in in a whole day you don't get time to probably you know go through tvs and newspapers so probably can get on into twitter and you know get get the news and also uh, see stuff about digital marketing as well all right thank you so much arup and for those who are listening i'm hoping that you have taken a bit of this and written it down arup here is talking about how important networking is and how important it is for any digital marketer to keep yourself updated by using a blog all right thank you so much arup for being on our studio and to give us a second tip we have with us our very own rajata all right rajata has been a student of web marketing academy for quite some time now and she is all ready to finish with the course and fly out to the world with so much confidence brimming welcome to the studio rajata hi hi mansi all right so rajita what is your tip for our audience today what is it that you want to talk about and yes um, we have it a very special with rajita because she wants to talk about a tool something to do with photographs what is the tool that you want to talk about rajita uh, one thing that appeals every customer is the photo so everyone needs a photo for their website be it a blog be it anything be it an ad anything be it anything what a customer views the first thing is photo so if you want to get a full like a clear picture of a, and uh, the clear one you can go to canva and get your customized car photo and then you can use it for your website or blog anything okay so there is a tool called canva, canva. so you log on to canva.com yeah canva.com okay then so you get you can give your specified uh, topic or industry then you get the related images regarding that and you can edit and um, do photoshop all those things then use it for your own thing Excellent. All right, that's a lovely tip. And for all those listeners who are listening, 
please log on to canva.com you could put up your photographs there or they have their They're, own yeah. theme based photographs as well and you could edit it right there you could even impose other photographs as background on those exactly okay all right thank you so much rajita thank for you, that Nancy. amazing tip thank you yeah thank you Moving on to the detailed stories we have the top story of this week to be Google Plus introducing collections and we have with us Kaushal in our studio to talk about Google Plus introducing collections uh, welcome to the show Kaushal thank you Manasi thank you all right um so what is this big story about Google Plus so uh, Google Plus is basically uh, taking on Uh, Pinterest, the sort of uh, platform that Pinterest first introduced, it's uh, on fourth of May. It launched something called as Google Plus Collections, which is basically a feature that allows brands and publishers to create uh, topic-based uh, feeds, which is very similar. So basically, uh, brands and publishers can create boards or collections, which they call as collections, which will now allow them to show off what their interests are. who they like to follow what they are interested in and the feed of the google plus will include all of these things so what is in it for google plus users what it allows the users to understand is to firstly show off the interest of the brands as to what their uh, you know verticals are secondly it also tells them uh, you know it easily explains what they are uh, into like say pinterest is used for a lot of uh, Uh, interest other than your businesses you basically not you don't show off your brand on pinterest you show off your company as a vertical what you're into what you're interested as and what your probably what your cu- customers are looking at so it's a similar take on uh, pinterest in fact the representative of uh, google plus who gave this news on the new york times had a very similar sort of introduction when ben silverman the ceo of pinterest introduced pin, uh, pinterest So he was like he wants companies to now show off what they're in, uh, interested in and make customers more comfortable with what verticals they're into, so that you know they understand the psychology of the company and what they're exactly into. All right. So how do you think brands can leverage this? See, the way I see it is uh, Google Plus has been struggling to establish themselves as. Uh, Uh, a social media platform a lot of people started when google plus started a lot of people started labeling them uh, labeling it as social media but then people were confused whether i should use google plus to have more authority on google or should i use it as a social media platform because it did not have any social media connection because you were not you're not exactly connecting with people it was just giving you more information about your business like say your location and uh, things like that registered it so that it basically gave you authority on the serp page So I feel they want to moderate this, and especially uh, last year when Google started giving a lot of relevance to Pinterest boards, it started coming on the SERP page. So basically, if you did your keyword research right, and you named your boards right, and you did all the things required to make a good board, it would actually appear on the SERP page. Like your third or your fourth result is generally a Pinterest board. So I think Google has finally realized that they have more potential because. eventually they hold more database uh, for the companies and it's always been a trend where they've trying they've been trying to push people to register in a google plus account to get more authority basically so i think it's in a way that gives a lot of brands uh, you know authority plus it helps to show off uh, what they are all about which is uh, which is uh, which is very important nowadays i think uh, brands are going beyond uh, the point where they just hard selling to people they want to show people that you know this is what a company stands for this is what we do as they might be doing some activities helping an ngo and things like that um we also recently read an article about uh, brands leveraging instagrammers who have lot of followers so um if i have to put all the social media together like facebook twitter instagram pinterest google plus what is that one tip that you would like to give to our listeners they could be uh, you know business proprietors they could be uh, digital marketers heading a couple of brands they could be from agencies uh, these are people who are going to use social media to ensure that they reach their target audience what is your tip to them i think my tip is very simple if you've noticed the trend in social media something 
that you sell a heart to your customers will not work for too long. Yes, it will work, but the time frame or the period is very uh, slow. It gets redundant very, very easily for me. But if you want to make a good impression, I would always say explain your brand story by using social media. That could be in the form of a video or form of an audio or things like that. Don't directly go on to selling. Yes, everyone eventually is going to follow the same lineup and you know go on and eventually you want to show off your brand so that you get enough sales. Yes, you cannot, you can't avoid that. It's inevitable. But I say that we have an amazing platform. We have people who create content for you. So why don't you say your brand story, you know, in form of social media? Like, let's take an example. If I would take a, a perfume company that's coming up, I would probably make an ad that uh, uh, ad or a video or, a, or or images based on say uh, when it rains. I love the smell of the mud. So what if we could capture it in a bottle? So make a video that, like that and promote a perfume bottle and then give your brand name at the end. Tell them what your brand stands for. You know, spin a story about your brand because we're human beings at the end of the day. We are bound by stories. We are bound by emotions. So if you can capture that using... That's what, that's what the platform is for at the end of the day. Something that goes viral today is either funny, it, it's emotional or it has an amazing story that grips you. So when the uh, the formula is very simple, it's it's right in front of you. All you have to do is have the right elements as uh, as part of your creators. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kaushal, for that uh, interesting tip. Uh, something that uh, most digital marketers today are overlooking. Um, is there anything else that you want to address and talk to our audience about? Uh, no, I would suggest uh, you would uh, take on uh, Google Plus collections, go on and, you know, bus, people like BuzzFeed and Bit Plus company and Innova, this golf are like few of the companies in the US that have uh, started doing this. You might feel it's, uh, or the Pinterest users might get uh, a bit offended because it's very, very similar, the interface, but then it's from Google. So at the end of the day, you have want to have some sort of authority to it. Obviously, it will not... Uh, there is no way you can compare both of them but in a way i think we should all start experimenting with the platform knows the pros and cons so that you know what is working for you and what's not because i i think the best thing i could tell is if a new platform is coming out it's good to experiment but let's not jump into it because my competitors into it or say x person is doing it let's not do it because the channel is there we have tons of social media platforms you just don't get into it because we have to get into it and you're scared that you might lose out audience. You should always have a strategy. Always know what kind of target audience is there on a particular platform and always, always understand the psychology of a particular platform. Excellent. Thank you so much, Kaushal. Thank you for coming to the show and uh, thank you for telling our listeners what to do and what not to do in social media. And thank you for letting us know what exactly is Google Plus Collections. I hope to see more of you in the studio soon. Um, hope to catch up with you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marcy. And I'm hoping that the audience is making a note of this as well. And we move on to our detailed stories for WMA Weekly Update this week. The next story for today is LinkedIn unveiling analytics for publishing on LinkedIn. It says new analytics for publishing on LinkedIn. See who has viewed your published post. According to the official blog post on LinkedIn, Angela Young made a post on May 7th and has said, Today we are excited to introduce analytics for publishing on LinkedIn as a new way to answer questions. Analytics for publishing on LinkedIn provides insights into who is reading and engaging with your posts. With this knowledge, you will be able to evaluate whether you're reaching the right audience, which posts are resonating with readers, and there's more to this. If you need to understand what this is, you could just go through the post that is there on the official LinkedIn blog, and that is written by Angela Young. The next story for today is Facebook introducing native ad tools. Facebook is offering new native focused tools to help publishers more easily implement native ad formats, native ad templates, native ad management tools and horizontal scrolling for native ads. According to a blog post on developers.facebook.com, native ads made easy has been a post written by Jenny Abrahamson and this was published on 6th of May. 
he says more importantly we have learned that people prefer native ads and find them more engaging based on internal research we conducted with the average app users we have learned that banner ads tend to be ignored and the second thing they've learned is integrated ads outperform which means that ad that is well integrated within the app design and doesn't really show off saying that it's an ad seems to be doing much better compared to other ads and the third thing they talk about is poor ad experiences having a negative effect on engagement which means that you put an ad and people don't like it it will actually affect the performance of that campaign and the other future campaigns as well so that was the update from facebook introducing native ads and the fourth story for today is meerkat ads facebook support according to medium.com we can now push live and upcoming streams of meerkat to facebook with meerkat's latest update it says it's easier than ever to discover and interact with the people you already know by integrating with your phone's address book and giving you the ability to push live and upcoming streams directly to your facebook page the blog describes how you can expand your reach by linking your meerkat account to a business brand or an organization's facebook page and post live and upcoming streams for your facebook audience to subscribe and tune in your audience can sign in with facebook connect to view your streams well that is the update from meerkat which means that you can live stream your events be it any wedding at home or be it a corporate event everybody in the world can connect to you live all right the fifth story for today is according to business standard new delhi a new research released by adobe along with cmo council shows that indian marketers have the highest level of confidence in their digital marketing proficiency in apac with a whopping 43% rating their approach as very good or good compared to a 24% apac average the research also revealed that the customer is the top most priority for indian marketers almost half of the indian marketers responding to the research said that the additional digital marketing improvements and maturity can help them create a more customer centric and responsive organization the confidence also underpins a sustained and a strong belief that digital is enabling engagement through the touch point that connects a brand with its customers and the last story for today according to adage.com chief digital officers are taking home the most of the digital marketing dough with a salary increase of a whopping 7.5% which ranges between $156,000 a year to about a $301,000 a year and this was a report from the recruiter mondo that's a big leap from last year where the survey had found that digital officers salary ranged anywhere between $148,000 to $280,000 now one reason for the increase could be perception companies are under pressure to come up with digital strategy so they are trying to build highly educated teams beginning at the top said Laura Magritte VP of digital marketing strategy at Mondo which said it based its salary data on thousands of digital marketing job placements over the past year that is all for this week we are hoping that you enjoy it and before we wind up we have two more tips for you and to give you those tips we have with us in our studio today Denzel so what is so special about Denzel today is that it is his birthday happy birthday Denzel yay thank you so much all right great uh, welcome to the studio Denzel yeah. and what is your tip to our audience what i can talk about is a little bit about is uh, seo search engine optimization uh, i've learned a little bit about it so uh, the way i see it uh, a couple of tools which have come in handy are like a keyword planner the google trends uh, apart from that like you know the number of uh, the letters which you're using you have some a tool called a lettercount.com mm -hmm. then uh, like which page are you in there's a website called which uh, page am i in that's another website uh, that's another tool which you can call it okay. 
uh, which you can use it for SEO optimization. So these are like you know, the research stuff which we use it generally uh, just to check where exactly are we in here, I mean right now and what do we do actually like you know to proceed further. Okay. Now letter count is something uh, like you know uh, supposedly we all know that for the title description we are uh, supposed to use like 60 to 70 characters. So we do not sit and count like you know the number of characters and the space which you use. So better we use a, like a tool which is much more easier. Uh, it, it saves time for us. That's one tool which we use. Uh, apart from that, like you know, supposedly if you are suppo uh, we want to check which page are we in uh, to ch like you know proceed forward the SEO. Uh, like we don't know actually, we cannot go on to the uh, one one single page and like you know keep checking which page are we. So we uh, use uh, came up with another. I mean we didn't come up. We <laughs> googled and, and found out uh, one other website uh, which was called a which page which page am I in. So that's one other website wherein it makes uh, it saves time for you. So these are a couple of things which I have come across so far. A keyword planner is something again which tells you, uh, like you know, which is easy, uh, makes your life easier because uh, it tells you, like you know, what are the things people are looking for online. So uh, on a comparative basis, you can always like you know compare and like you know research a little more and uh, you can use that as a keyword on the keyword planner. Again, Google Trends they come in a little handy. Uh, because we do come to know in which all the other places actually uh, these people are looking for these kind of stuff. I mean, like supposedly we're looking for ethnic clothes, so we know uh, like you know ethnic clothes are something which is more uh, you know uh, people search for in India. But we also come to know in which part of India are people looking for it more. So supposedly if anybody has an online store and if you want to open up a like in you know, a store uh, like you know uh, maybe a brick or motor somewhere in uh, like you know any part of India they want to open up. So that place is something which we can they use it for that purpose actually. So these are a couple of things a uh, little bit I know about SEO so that's all I can speak about actually. All right, thank you so much, Denzil. Also, could you please mention where do we find this keyword planner and Google Trends and all that? Oh, it's really easy actually. You just have to go uh, go on to Google and like you know log on to Gmail. Uh, like you know, uh, by just have to type Google. I mean, sorry, keyword planner. So it already like the first thing which pops up is that. So that's one thing and like you know, even the trends which that they pop up really easy though okay all right thank you so much denzel that was really some informative tip for all our audience and i'm hoping all our audience are also making a note of this this is very important for your business and today i have a tip from myself and here is what it is i was going through social media examiner and here's a beautiful blog post on how to use Facebook groups for business. It says, do you want to create an online community? Have you considered a Facebook group? Facebook groups can support your community building and marketing efforts in a number of ways. And here are a couple of things that they have said. Now, the first tip they are giving out is create a community around an event. And the second tip they want to talk about is launch a group for a program, product or a service. And the third tip they want to give you is build a networking group. All right. And if you're interested in knowing how a Facebook group can help you build your business, then do log on to socialmediaexaminer.com and search for three ways to use Facebook groups for business. The same link is also mentioned in the footnotes for this podcast. I'm hoping that you have found this tip very useful. All right, I'm pretty sure that you have got updates like this about your company or updates that you have come across in your daily life on a couple of websites. Do email us about these weekly updates and maybe we I'm going to just call you and talk to you so that we can have your voice on our WMA weekly updates. All right, with this, you could keep in touch with us on Facebook as Web Marketing Academy, on Twitter as WMA India, or better still, you could just email me on M-A-N-A-S-I, that's mansi at webmarketingacademy.in. So, see you next week, same time, and until then, this is your host, Mansi, signing off with a bye-bye.